Good day, golfers, and welcome to another episode of 613 Golfer Podcast. As always, I am your host, Jeff Botter, publisher of Flagstick Golf Magazine. I am once again so glad that you're able to, uh, to join us for this episode. Well, you know, the weather just seems to be playing a weird trick on our minds. Golf courses are trying their darndest to get their golf courses open and ready for the season. Some courses have already opened. They've had golfers out there playing. The weather looks like it's changing for us in a positive. We're going into a long weekend. We should be pumped and excited about uh, about getting out on the golf course. And what happens? It looks like we're going to get snow. Now, I'm crossing my fingers, both my fingers, and hoping that that does not happen, um, that it stays away. Maybe it's a little bit of rain and everybody can sort of move forward with their opening plans for the weekend. That certainly would be an awesome thing. But... The forecast is what the forecast is, and we might get a little bit of snow this week uh, leading into the weekend, and uh, that might slow things down a little bit, but hopefully not. Um, the weather does look like it's getting into the in 13, 14 degrees come Saturday and Sunday, and uh, that, that to me is perfect golf weather for, for early April. So uh, cross your fingers and hope. Now, um, there are some courses that are already open. I just want to kind of, we, we talked uh, last episode about uh, course openings. Uh, you can find all the course openings uh, updated as we find out about them at flagstick.com. Uh, we have a calendar in there and we're listing all the courses that are uh, open and are opening. Now I'm just looking at the calendar over here, so don't mind me, but um, as it sits right now, um, going into uh, this coming weekend, from what we see, Anderson Anderson Range uh, driving ranges, Emerald Links driving range, Cloverdale already open, 19th Tee open, Archie's driving range in, uh, in Cornwall uh, also open. Um, the Kevin Ham Golf Center obviously has been open and uh, and more uh, Mare Blue open, more driving ranges. Most driving ranges are open now, so you can get out and get your practice in. Golf courses, Iroquois already open, first open this year, exciting for them. Calabogie Highlands open, Timber Ridge open, Cedar Glen uh, Golf Club uh, in Williamsburg open, Crooked Creek in Athens open, Mapleview Golf Club is open, Prescott open, Juniper Fairways is open, and it looks like this weekend Amherstview Golf Course is going to be opening, Dragonfly Golf Links is going to be opening, and uh, Right now, that's what we got on the list. Now, there are some other ones coming up soon. Manderley, Garrison, the Marshes, Metcalf, and Brockville Country Club later this month. Um, but I think we'll see that calendar. If you go to flagstick.com and look at that calendar, you'll see a lot, of, a lot more courses added into that list over the coming, uh, coming days and, and coming weeks. So um, I want to switch topics just for a second here. I want to get something a little a little. Not maybe it's not as interesting to everybody as it might be to me, but some people have commented um, jokingly, of course. I don't think anybody's being very serious, and if they are being serious, it's a little weird to be serious about this. But some people have commented on the fact that the microphone in the podcast, when they're watching it uh, on YouTube, because obviously those on audio have no idea where the microphone is, but some people have commented that the microphone and my setup seems to change from episode to episode. It doesn't seem to be the same every single episode. Now, let me just clarify something for you here. I happen to have a very intelligent, smart computer, not 16-year-old, uh, will be 16 this month or in April, um, that is uh, very knowledgeable about computers. And he actually uh, built this new computer system for me uh, part by part uh, by himself. I did all the installations, set up windows, you know, everything. Uh, he picked each piece individually to fit the needs of what I needed for a business because uh, we're replacing a Mac here. So let's be honest, even though it's a lot cheaper, we've got to find some quality stuff. That I'm joking. Anyways, um, he is also very knowledgeable about the audio and video setup of things, the microphone positioning, the video positioning, and how I even do this podcast and, and uh, my energy. He's uh, been a bone of community. Even though he doesn't really love golf, uh, has played occasionally, he does have some, some advice for me. So he sets this up for me. He puts the mic in different positions, the light in different positions. And every single week he watches snippets of it. He's like, yeah, dad, that doesn't look good. Yeah, dad, that doesn't sound right. We got to move it here. So what we're doing here is we're tweaking. And it's, a, it's my 16 year old son that is, is it's fine for me. I could deal with it however it is, but it needs to be perfect. And, uh, and he knows what he's talking about. So I think the way we've got it set up this week might be the way we, 
we keep it going for a while, but we'll see. After he watches it on YouTube, maybe he changes his mind again. Anyway, that's the reason for that. If anybody was actually being serious when they were asking me why that's happening, that is why it's happening. Now, those of uh, who have uh, listened to um, CFRA, the radio, um, over the years would know or would might remember that I used to host with uh, my good friend Tony Dunn a podcast, or not a podcast, God, I'm getting too modern here, a radio show called Fairways and Flagsticks, which is very much similar to what we do here um, with respect to uh, uh, 613 Golfer podcast, and that it was really all about local golf in the area and so on. Um, now, part of that radio show was at the beginning of pretty much every show, I had a rant. Something that sort of ticked me off, maybe something that kind of got under my skin a little bit, something I saw and noticed that I just had to get it off my chest or make a, make a comment about. And um, I said when we started this podcast, I was not going to have that as a regular portion of this podcast because I don't want this to be all about negative, negative, negative. I want to be speaking about the positive in, uh, in what we're doing um, with, uh, with golf in the 613. However, um, sometimes some things pop up that kind of just, you, you have to talk about, you have to, you have to have a, you feel like you have to have a voice about it. Now, we're not talking about millions of people listening to this podcast or watching this on YouTube, but even if it's just enough people to understand, we're going through a pandemic right now. COVID-19 has been an issue for many businesses through in many industries. It has affected everybody. And I know that everybody has their opinion about it. And I know everybody feels that they have a need to voice their opinion about whether they think it's real or whether they think that the lockdowns and the restrictions that are in place are helping, hurting, necessary, unnecessary, whatever the case may be. And that is our right to have our opinions. And it is also our right to voice those opinions in whatever platform we feel like, whether they're right, wrong, or otherwise, it really doesn't matter. However, one of the things that I want to try to get out there and be very clear about is the golf industry is fortunate, very fortunate that we're in an industry where our our sport, our game is out is played outside. We're in a, uh, an industry that allows people to participate in golf and social distancing and, and being safe is not an issue. There's tons of space out there. There's no reason for us to be on top of one another. There's no reason for us to touch things that other people are touching. We can, we can just play golf finish our round of golf, we can still even go on patios and, and have a have a drink with our group as long as we follow the rules. Now, this is one of the things that, that I want to make clear. Golf is a game about integrity. Golf is a game about rules. Golf is a game about policing ourselves. We don't have to police one another and we don't have to have a chaperone or someone looking over our shoulder making sure we follow these rules. We're smart enough to be able to follow those rules of golf on our own. We need to be smart enough to follow the rules of COVID-19 protocols for these golf courses on our own as well. We're not going to, we're going to run the risk of ruining what we have for our industry and our sport by being selfish and not following the guidelines that are put in place because we choose not to believe in it. And, and yeah, it, it upsets me because I'm in the golf industry. This magazine, this podcast, my website, we rely on golf happening in order to survive as a business. And, and we've been hit by it as a business. I, I understand how other businesses have been hit by this, but let me make it perfectly clear. I am a business. I have suffered and I have been hit hard through what happened last March. Um, my business, you know, we, we took a hit just like everybody else did. We weren't immune to it. We're not a golf course. I don't have tee times to sell. And just because my tee sheet is full doesn't mean that, that you know, just because a golf course's tee sheet is full doesn't mean that, that I'm super busy too and that my pages of my magazine are full and money's coming in the door. It, it doesn't work that way. So when I talk to you about following the rules and following the guidelines and, and being smart, I'm speaking to you um, as a golf industry professional, someone who wants to see us be able to continue to play. And that's why I'm, I'm saying this. So we're entering into a long weekend. 
golf is going to be golf courses are going to be full the ones that are open and we need to do our part be smart don't rely on the golf course to go around policing the rules and regulations and protocols they don't have the staff to do that they don't have the time to do that and they're not going to do that and ultimately what could happen is they could end up getting fined or shut down because patrons on the golf course don't want to follow the rules that are in place and they're not able to be out there policing it nor should they have to be so all i'm saying is that as we enter into this long weekend and as you enter into a new golf season the rules are there for our safety. The rules are there to be followed. Follow the rules. Keep your distance. Leave the flag in if that's the requirement. Show up when you're supposed to show up for your tea time. Don't, you know, if you're asked to wear a mask on a cart sitting beside your buddy who you, then wear the mask. The golf course is probably not going to run around checking to see if everybody's wearing masks. But that's on you. We're adults. We're smart people and we're golfers. We should already know how to follow rules. So let's follow those rules and make sure that golf is not one of those sports, those games, those activities that gets shut down because people aren't smart enough to just simply follow the rules. All right, that's it. That's all I got. That's my rant. I'll try not to do this on a weekly basis. And, and, uh, and I certainly hope that, uh, that those that do listen and, and watch this podcast, um, you know, just hear what I'm saying and hear my pleads, uh, you know, to make sure that uh, that golf continues to happen for us because it's important. It's important for everybody. All right. Uh, so we have a little new feature that we're going to start this uh, this episode. Uh, a little bit of a contest. And basically, what I'm looking for is your favorite hole in the six one three. So we've all played lots of golf courses, and maybe we haven't. Maybe we're only maybe we're we're uh, um, member players, and we only play the golf course that we're a member at. But we have a favorite hole on our member course. And uh, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for you to email me at jbauder, J-B-A-U-D-E-R, uh, at flagstick.com. You can get to me through flagstick.com on the website as well. And I want you to email me the course and the hole number. Um, and if you happen to have a picture of that hole that, uh, that you've taken and you want to submit that to me as well, that would be awesome. I'm going to take all of these entries. Uh, each week and I'm going to uh, draw a name from those entries and the winner is going to have uh, their choice of uh, passes for two to a number of different golf courses. Now I'm not going to spell out the golf courses right now uh, because we're still in the process of uh, collecting um, a number of uh, passes from golf courses as the season is just getting going and, and uh, they're focusing on that not on getting me golf passes uh, but we'll have a number of different passes to to choose from and we're looking for you to submit your favorite golf hole and uh, we're going to feature them on this podcast we're going to feature them on flagstick.com and we're going to draw a name a winner every week so uh, yeah so i think it's just a little fun contest nothing serious but i want to get your opinion i want to know what people think and it doesn't matter if you've only played the golf course once and even if you've never played the golf course and it happens to be a picture of a golf course that you've seen that you'd love to play and you think oh that would be my favorite part three uh, in, in the, in the 613, the golf course has to be in the 613. So don't send me pictures of sawgrass or don't send me pictures of Pebble beach or anything like that. I want to see favorite golf holes in the 613. All right. So we're going to take a quick little break, um, from the podcast. And when we come back, our first guest this week is Andy McWilliams. Andy McWilliams is, uh, from Ottawa's own golf sim gurus, a golf simulator, uh, installation and construction company. Uh, and we're going to have a little chat with Andy about his business and what he's been doing uh, over the last year. Uh, this is the 613 Golfer Podcast. We'll be right back after a chip shot. All right. Let's see who goes first. I'll go. Ready golf, right? Hey, ladies first. Mikey, you have the on. Introducing Sim 2. It's built differently around a forged aluminum ring. For the drives everyone wants to hit and no one wants to follow. Who's next? First we changed the shape, now we're changing the construction. Sim 2 from TaylorMade. All right, welcome back. My guest this week is Andy McWilliams. Andy is a, a business, is part of a rather a large boom right now. Um, in his case, uh, not entirely started because of COVID, uh, but certainly has benefited a little bit from 
the COVID boom, if you will, with, uh, with people taking less vacations, playing more golf at home, wanting to work on their games and uh, maybe a little bit more disposable income to spend on certain things. Um, but Andy is uh, um, a very accomplished golfer in his own right, a very passionate golfer. And, uh, and he started up this great little business uh, uh, called Golf Sim Gurus. And uh, we're going to talk to Andy right now. Welcome to the show, Andy. How are you doing? Excellent. Thank you, buddy. How are you? I'm very, very well. I mean, every every week I uh, I enjoy doing these podcasts now. So every week I get to talk to somebody different. And I know we've talked about uh, about getting you on here to talk about what you're doing now. And uh, finally, finally, I managed to, to get you on here and we can have a chat. So I'm very excited about this. Excellent. Me too. So Andy, uh, before we get into what you do, uh, and I've already I've already sort of uh, let people know as we as I uh, we introed in here that uh, what you do with uh, golf sim gurus and, and golf simulators, but I haven't told any details. But I want people to get to know a little bit more about Andy McWilliams and and who you are, where you come from, and your your background. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Andy McWilliams? Okay, uh, born in Glasgow, seventy four. Um, my dad worked for the local council. He was a, a lorry driver type thing, um, a keen golfer, but he was very much a social golfer. Uh, and in words that uh, kind of, you know, he had to be drinking when he was playing golf, a little bit like Canadians in that way, you know. Um, Saturday and Sunday mornings, you know, with the, the, the bag full of beer. So that was kind of my intro to it. Um, took it up pretty quick, um, about 15, uh, turned got an assistant pro just before my 19th birthday um and i was at windy hill in glasgow which was a very nice golf club really enjoyed that um and i played a little bit on what was that was then was the tartan tour so it was quite good there was a few guys coming through then uh paul laurie was just a youngster then as well so he was around one of my proudest moments was uh an assistance event everyone was getting a little bit drunk after the round in one of the hotel bars and I picked up a guitar and the only thing I could play was like a, a six chord start to paint it black. So I go, dun, 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 dun. And he goes, paint it black. And it was like my proudest moment ever that anyone like, you know, recognized a bit of music that I played. Um, so I played a little bit for there for a couple of years. And then I went out to the States. I was assistant pro at Stevens Point Country Club in Wisconsin. Um, and I did that till 98. And then I realized I wasn't very good at golf in terms of the playing sense. And, you know, all my dreams were kind of dashed. So I thought I better go and get myself a proper job. Came back to the UK and I went to Leeds University and I did physical education, sports science. Um, did that, qualified from that, taught for a year. And then I kind of got dragged into sales, uh, telecom sales. Uh, the money was really good. I went and worked for a company that had um, the... Uh, they had the exclusivity to BlackBerry. So this was back when nobody um, could get email on a phone. So this was like amazing. So I did that for a, a few years. Um, and then I went into another business, Hot Tubs. Um, and I worked for a company for two years and then I bought the company. So they, they went a little bit, they went into kind of financial hardship at the beginning of the credit crunch, 2008. And I bought up what was left of it just because no one else would give me a job, basically. Um, so I bought up what was left of it, started that. I sold that last year. And then I started up Golf Sim Gurus. So I've been a really keen golfer all my life. Gave up my amateur status back in 98. Um, and just kind of fiddled around after that, playing amateur events over in the UK and stuff. Um, and then moved over here in 2000 and. 17 when I married my gorgeous wife who's Canadian she's a local girl here in Ottawa uh she says I had to go to Canada to get a woman because no one in Scotland would have me but you know it's uh it's a bit harsh isn't it you know it's a bit harsh uh <laughs> what are you laughing at but um yeah so that's really it got to here um built a couple of sims for friends built the academy with the help of Carson up at Marshes and then everyone was like well I just don't you do it commercially? So um, COVID was the perfect time. No one was going south. No one was wanting to um, be outside, you know. Um, and there's a lot of very keen golfers in Ottawa. 
There's no question about that. There's definitely <laughs> keen golfers in Ottawa. Judging from the fact that there's probably actually people out playing golf today. Yes. In this and, and it's warm out, so why wouldn't you? But, you know, once golf courses start opening up, the temperature really doesn't matter around here. And, and, and look, nobody, you're, you're Scottish, you're from Scotland. The golf over there, the idea of playing golf in 21 degree weather is, is not exactly something that occurs on an everyday basis. And two days in July. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> so the idea being that, um, that for you going golfing on a day like today is like, that'd be a warm day in Scotland on, on, on most days. Um, oh yeah, 20, 21 degrees, you're getting skin cancer alerts on the news back home. You know, they're like, you know, cover up factor 45,000. You've got to wear it. So, so here we are, you're, you've, you've, you're passionate about the game. There's no question about that. I've known you for a while now and, and you're, you're passionate about the game, good player. You've got a, a history and a background in, in golf. You start golf sim gurus basically based on, on what, more or less one major build that you did at the marshes. Um, yeah. And, and which is, which was an awesome build and, and you start this business, you get rid of it, you get out of the, the sales and hot tub business. And now you're into building um, and installing simulators commercially and, and residentially. So why don't you tell us a little bit about golf sim gurus, tell us a little bit about um, the, the types of simulators that you install, you know, get, get to know a, a better idea of what this business is all about and how it, and how you do things. Yeah, no problem. Um, so there's, it's a very much a niche market, and I think that's what I liked about it. Um, same as being in the hot tubs back in Scotland, it was very much a new market. Um, so there's not a lot of people to go to, there's not a lot of competition. Um, so that attracted me to it to begin with. Um, so yeah, it was kind of weird. I went and spoke to the guys at True Golf down in Utah. Um, I met them at the PGA show and I had a chat with them. And it was more about initially wanting to do my own indoor place. Um, and that is, is a dream I've had for a while. Uh, a little thing called Brexit kind of threw the spanner in the works a few years back. So kind of put it on hold. Then I was wanting to do it again this fall uh, in sync with the Golf Sound Gurus thing. And my wife kind of was like, mm, I don't know, with the lockdowns and stuff, do you really want to be paying rent for something that's not even open? So I said, okay, so we went full on ahead with Golf Sound Gurus. Um, Two golf were great. They were like, okay, we can do this for you. We can do that for you. We don't really have anyone in Eastern um, uh, Ontario. They do have a dealer up in uh, Quebec, up Northern Quebec. So they were like, okay, we can do this. We can do this. And I said, that's perfect. You need a little bit more to your bow than just one brand. Um, so there's a few that the golf and business, I'll show you, the golf and business is pretty proprietary. A lot of the guys have got their own distributors, their own manufacturers. So you're kind of, Coming in new, I'm building sims for people that have got TrackMan. I'm building sims for people that have got SkyTrack, uh, two absolutely opposite ends of the market. Um, and then I'm doing True Golf, and I also do Unicorn, which is a Korean company. Um, and I'll build for those. And those are really simple. Um, I prefer to do systems that are what we call down the line systems, where you have the hitting mat in the middle, and you stand either side of it, whether you're left handed or right handed. What I don't like is you know you've got a buddy who's a left-hander which there's lots of them in Canada and he stands up and you've got to move the launch monitor over for him and then the right-hander stands up and you've got to move the launch monitor over from there that's like too much work you know um so the true golf ones do that very well the other thing with true golf that's really quite good about them is their courses they've had this package of courses it's like a hundred of golf courses that they've mapped out and had for probably about 10 years, maybe 15 years. And they're a little bit like the, how can I put it, the windows for golf sims. Like pretty much everybody uses them. You know, Full Swing used them. Obviously True Golf themselves use them. Trackman used them until they had their own uh, simulator courses. Um, Ernest Sports, uh, Flight School. I'm trying to think who else was on there. And Unicor obviously still use them. Um, so they're good to begin with. Uh, and they're one of the few companies from my perspective as a retailer that didn't start price gouging when the, uh, all the prices went up and during COVID. When everyone went golf crazy, um, they were one of the few guys that said, yeah, we're going to hold our prices where we are type thing. 
whereas everyone else was kind of like getting on the bandwagon and prices were going through the roof. Listen, um, the simulators that you installed are from from an expense perspective. I mean, because people are listening to this, and the reason I have you on here, aside from from you know people getting to know about you and and learning a little bit more about uh, about golf simulators, is is can I put one in my garage? Can I put one in my basement? Absolutely. Like, like how affordable are these? Is it, is it really, you know, it's up to you how much you spend after you, you start with this. So, so how do you, how do these things price out and how cheap can you get them installed and how expensive can you go? So I try and be as, uh, as good as I can with them. Uh, one of the things I've worked on is, um, making deals with manufacturers where I just take the hardware from them. So some of the big manufacturers, you're about golfs and stuff like that, and true golf, they'll sell you a sim in a box, which is essentially, the, it arrives on a pallet with some instructions and you've got everything there. You've got all the poles you can get, and the prices are pretty expensive. You're looking about 43, for the big ones, the fancy ones, you're looking about 43,000 US. You know, I'm coming in with the fancy ones at the moment because I just take the hardware from them and then I build everything else with local materials. Uh, whether it be timber, whether it be aluminium trusses from the one of the suppliers in Perth here. Um, and I'm probably knocking somewhere in the region about 30% off their prices because I'm not paying duty on big ticket items coming over the border. I'm not paying. So one, it's trying to boost a little bit of local business, building my contacts up locally with our local retailers as well. Um, so for example, the a supply only deal on a, True Golf True Track would be about between 16 and 18,000 Canadian. And that's you getting pretty much everything apart from you do your own sub floor, which is probably going to cost you another thousand uh, with the price of um, materials from Home Depot. Um, if, me, if I'm coming in to do it, which means my guys are there and gonna, it's a three or four day build, you're probably looking somewhere close to about 21. When you go to the top end of the market, which I would say is like a Unicor IXO or True Flight, you're anything between 28 to 32. Um, and those are systems that, again, are being advertised out there for about 40 US. Um, so I think I'm extremely competitive in my prices. Um, and we're getting better at it all the time. You know, we're, we've, had, we've now had some of the big boys like Trackman come in and ask us to do some work for them. Um, and that's great because you get to go in and see how other people are doing it and you know you steal ideas and plagiarize and stuff like okay well we like the way they do that you know take a picture of that and let's find it on home depot or the rona website tonight and we'll start using those um which is terrible to say that but that's exactly the the way it goes um but yeah you know if you've got a space the first thing to do is look at what you've got in your basement or your garage 12 feet is the minimum width uh i would say nine feet for height, I've only got about eight, eight in my basement um, and I can hit driver uh, and so can a bunch of my buddies. But if you get someone at six, four, they're probably gonna be hitting a hybrid with a, a ceiling at that height. Um, my answer to that is, well, it's my basement. If you're playing for money, then you hit what you want, um, you know, and, uh, you know, dry your eyes. But it's, um, yeah, so just what I'd always say to people is get in touch, send some pictures, uh, whoever you're dealing with, you know, first point of contact is this is the space I'm working with. These are, this is my height. This is my depth. This is my width. Um, what system works in this space? And then it's things like, well, are you, you know, how keen are they? Are they just uh, wanting a swing? Are they wanting more of a social thing? Or are they really wanting to work on their game? And that's probably going to steer you towards the system that we're talking about. You know, there's some systems out there that are more, um, that are more um, geared towards social you know the the true golf have come out with the thing the multi-sport where you can actually play golf and then it's got hockey baseball soccer zombie dodgeball and shooting games on there as well so if you've got kids and you just want to get them keep them active through the winter then that's the way to go if someone is a plus one handicap you know you might want to say well you want to make pick up something like a bike scope or a track man or something and i'll just build the enclosure for you you know it's um yeah, there's, there's lots out there. And the great thing about it is that the, the uh, technology is getting better all the time. You know, um, even just in the last, since I put my first one in, in my basement three or four years ago, it's night and day with the graphics, the technology, so on and so forth. You know? So, so um, I was, and you kind of answered a little bit of my question there, but I, I wanted to ask you, like with, with the different simulators, so it is, it is, 
it's it's possible for someone who just wants a simulator where they can play golf on it and have a selection of courses to choose from to get a simulator like that. Uh, but it's also possible for somebody to get a simulator that they can do. I mean, I know the, there was old simulators where you used to be able to do face tracking and and uh, you know um, you know launch angle and you know smash factors and and spin rates and stuff like that. So you can you can go as as bare bones to the bottom like. I only want to be able to play golf. I don't care about what my launch angle is or what the spin rate is, yeah. but I can get that too if I'm really looking for those details. Oh yeah, I mean TrackMan, as you know, TrackMan will give you um, everything possible to do with the golf ball, the club, so on and so forth. Um, at the top end, there's different. Uh, how can I put it? Uh, they've got their different strengths. You know, quad is very good because it's a camera system that sits in front of the the ball. It's very good at club head data because it's taking pictures of the club head as it makes impact with the ball. Um, Trackman's better. Uh, Trackman prefers to see more flight, but as long as you've got more than 12 feet from the hitting area to the screen, then the Trackman numbers are really, really good. You know, um, I'm doing one this week in Stitzville for a chap, and he's just got his Trackman, and we're fitting all that, and we're, you know, it's going to be amazing. We've got a little bit of a uh, orange turf so we can tie it in with the, the color of the track man and so on and so forth so it's going to look like a proper man cave um you know but he's ginger so it also matches his hair as well so it's you know it's, it's going to be awesome but it's um yeah the, the, at the top end they've got different strengths you know the if i was outdoors i would say track man of the day if i'm indoors it's a toss-up between track man and uh, the gc quad depending on what you want to do um again my preference is TrackMan simply because it's down, looking down the line of the ball, but other people have got their own preferences. And that's fine. You know, I don't sell GC Quad, but I sell, I'll build a room or a simulator to any sort of size for them, whoever they want. You know, we're doing really nice designs right now where we're putting in a three, four percent gradient in front of the screen. So as soon as the ball hits the screen, drops off, it literally just hits the natural slope and just rolls back to your feet. Uh, you don't even have to move. It's the laziest thing in the world. But as soon as you mention it to customers, they're like, "Yeah, that's exactly what I want." My gosh, good lord! So now, 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 now the uh, now as as lazy as playing sim sim golf is, it's yes. it, it's become lazier. <laughs> Absolutely, and it's your, and it's partly your fault. So you know, we're just since we're pointing pointing fingers and laying blame here. Absolutely. Yeah, no, there's there's absolutely no exercise involved whatsoever, you know. And the next thing is obviously the uh, the uh, the little clip thing on the end of the putter so you can pick the ball up and put it back on the tee without even having it bend down. You know, that's that's the, that's the next part of the evolution. Oh my gosh. So so tell me about some of the builds you've done, Andy. Like um like, like let's say the the most extravagant build that you've done the most like not necessarily the most expensive but i'm, I'm sure that they're probably somewhat i would related. say the one that the, the one that we just did down in kingsville was pretty impressive it was a massive so again come back i don't want to keep backing around but true golf i've got a few systems out there that are just crazy prices uh there's one that comes in at about seven thousand dollars um I, the guy seen the picture of it absolutely i want that i told him the price and he's like no i don't want that um so I was like, well, you know, we can do something. So what we basically did was we, we built it um, out of local materials for an awful lot less. Um, we, so that came in a lot, a lot cheaper. Um, but that was your curved bulkhead, uh, multi-sport system, a little bit of slope on the screen. Um, the only issue there was the, um, the client wanted it up against the wall. So I had to bring... Uh, the screen forward a foot which kind of had a knock-on effect with all the measurements but this is going into a private office uh down in kingsville which is just outside windsor and it was pretty smart you know he's got a master's party booked for next week uh all his buddies down there playing golf he's got the 75 inch tv screen next to it um the bar so on and so forth he's ready to go for the masters uh, and that was fun you know it was fun to do something that i wouldn't say there was an unlimited budget but he was just like yeah i just want it to look the absolute best that it can you know so we didn't skimp on anything in terms of turf um wall coverings so on and so forth it was just like yeah i just want the absolute best so that was fun um and it's nice at the end of it when he's hitting balls on it and he's just got a big massive smile on his face you know 
he's standing there and he's like, why did that, you know, why did that go this way? And I'm like, well, you know, if you hit the ball in the middle of the golf club, it'll go where you want, you know, when he's kind of testing it and stuff. And you got to give him a bit of hard time. Eh? He's like, pulls out his new Ping G425 driver. And then he hits a couple of shots with it. I says, I would just put that on Kijiji. You just mark it as a sweet spot, untarnished, you know, hit it off the toe, hit it off the heel. Um, but yeah, so that was probably the, 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 the biggest one, the most fun. I had one recently in Carling, uh, Carling Avenue here in Ottawa as well. The guy did it in his garage. Uh, and he was a designer, uh, a guy called uh, Ron, and he just made the funkiest design. Uh, a little bit harder to do, a little bit harder to complete. Um, and typical engineer, he's kind of, every night he would, because of COVID, we would go in and work. And then at night he would go in after us and have a look and say, well, I really like this and I don't like this so much. And so the plans changed a few times, um, which is great. Getting a text message at 8.30 at night, can you just change what you did today? Um, but yeah, so that was fun as well. Um, that was a bit more of a severe slope on the screen, which we ended up sort of bringing back down a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's fun. And we're still, we're still learning. We're looking at stuff. You know, I'm, there's a couple of forums out there on Facebook and stuff like that. And you see guys in the States doing crazy things. And it's like, okay, well, you know, the next time you talk to a client, say, well, we just saw this online. Do you want to fancy trying that? And like, yeah, okay. So like, I'm just doing my own one in my own basement right now. So I've got a sim and then I've got a putting platform to the side, which we're trying to work out right now and make sure it's perfectly level so we can uh, do putting analysis and stuff like that at the side. Um, yeah. It's, I, what we try and always say is if you can imagine it and you can pay for it, we can build it. You know, it's, there's absolutely no limit to, apart from your imagination, there's no limit to what you can do. Now, um, what's the, uh, what would maybe the, uh, the, um, the least sort of extravagant build that you've done, what would, what would something like that look like? Um, probably just a wooden frame, two by six across the front, two by six across the back, safety pads, screen, back screen. We always use the same turf. We don't skimp on turf at all. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're spending 40 grand or 15 grand, it's always the same turf because there's no point playing about uh, and damaging your reputation by using a cheaper product. Um, yeah, it's just something simple. Um, you know, the walls would probably end up doing in uh, what we call automotive carpet, uh, which is a kind of black, just a blackout carpet. It's the same thing we put on walls on uh, uh, movie theaters. It just blacks out the, the area around the screen to highlight the, the picture coming off the projector. Um, and, you know, we've done jobs at that end of the market, happy to do it. What I normally say to customers is, um, you know, we'll supply you with everything. We'll give you a couple of days labor to help you get started and stuff like that. But, you know, if they're wanting things at that end of the market, then they're obviously doing a little bit of the work themselves. Um, there's forums out there to help guys get started with it. You know, if they want to do their own build and they want to come in and ask me just to give them help for a couple of days, you know, I'm doing that with a guy down in Kentville right now. Um, yeah, you know, we'll, you know, we can make it as fancy or as basic as you want. Uh, end of the day, some guys just want to get a swing, you know, and that's fine, you know. Um, we'll talk to them about software. I get a lot of calls about PC specs and stuff like that. Um, you know, guys are trying to run golf simulators on five-year-old desktops and then wondering why it's kind of stuttering and so on and so forth. It's like, you know, the, 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 the sort of two things you want a really good quality on your sim is the screen and the PC with a, a good, decent graphics card. And that'll, you know, make your uh, experience a lot more enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's funny I, the, when I, uh, at the intro of the, the show today, I, uh, I was kind of joking around about my older son that uh, is a computer guy like he's 15 yeah. he's turning 16 uh in april um beautiful but he's a computer nut uh, he's he built his own system um he just uh, i've just the system i'm using now i just switched from a mac um over to a windows system he built it all part by part chose the parts specifically that i needed for what i do with with the uh, desktop publishing and graphic design and now with the, a lot of audio and video work he built his system upstairs which is a gaming system and um of course right now gpus are the uh, are the hardest thing in the world that you can't get them um you literally cannot i had all the parts for this system sitting in a box ready for him to build and the only thing we were waiting on was a GPU. I ended up having to buy a GPU off Kijiji. And I ended up paying 
retail for a used GPU just so that I can finish my system and get using it because you just can't, good luck, you can't get graphics, uh, graphics processors for computers right now because there just isn't any inventory. That was the issue we had down on the job in Kingsville. So I get there and um, I'm loading everything up and I, I put the order in that this project's been going on for three months um, in terms of the ordering and everything in and stuff like that. We were having to wait till their contractors had done a certain amount of the build before we could do our part. So I said, okay, let's get proactive. And I put in an order for the latest uh, NVIDIA 3 to 3000 series graphics card. And that was great and all the rest of it. And the PC it came with was a, uh, was an EMD processor. And as soon as I put it in, um, it flags up saying, oh, not compatible Intel processors. So I've just spent three and a half grand on a PC for this job. And I had to drive out and drive down to Windsor and go into Best Buy and buy a top end PC there um, that had an Intel processor because this processor wasn't compatible. And you don't know these things. And the, when I spoke to Trudolf, they were like, it would probably work, but we don't have any experience with them. So our support would be limited. And the last thing you want to do when a guy's spending, you know, X amount of tens of thousands of dollars is to have him, you know, worried about any part of the system. So it's like bite the bullet, spend the money, so on and so forth. As a result, I've got a new PC in my basement. So <laughs> nice, nice. So how many systems have you uh, have you done, Andy, since you since you kicked this whole thing off? How many how many um, systems have you put, put together? I think we're sitting on twelve. We started off middle of uh, November at Brockville. Uh, we did a few in Brockville, um, and then we Brockville Country Club, and then we a bunch of residential ones and another commercial one. Um, I'll, we've done about four, five in Ottawa. Everything else has been um, Toronto and the other side of Toronto. The, the, the place we've been busiest is actually London, Ontario. I don't know why. It seems to be golf sim center of the universe right now. Um, in four or five months, we've done three jobs there. So it's been really busy down that way. Um, yeah, it's yeah. I'm thinking, thinking about twelve. I've got another three on the books right now, and then I've got everything else is diaried for the fall, kind of August September. I'm kind of cutting a line on it or drawing a line in the sand first week in May because then I start my prep for my major, which is the flagstick open. You know, <laughs> go start with that. You know, a little bit. You know, a few setups, start the running. Um, you know, all the serious athletic training. It'd be perfect if you could get Equinel on your uh, on your sim. So when you're down that in the ba when you're down in the basement doing the you know getting the uh, getting the work in putting in the work you know to prepare for the open that you could be uh, getting some practice rounds in without actually having to go to the golf course. Well, there's actually a software out there called the Golf Club, and it's, yes. um, you, you know about it, right? So there's actually Equinel is on there. The first nine holes of Equinel are on there because I've designed it. Oh really? So, you you did you did a design? Yeah, I mapped it all out when I came back from my vacation last March and COVID lockdown and stuff couldn't go anywhere. I sat in my basement and started doing Equinel. And what I realized was Equinel is actually a pretty easy golf course if you hit the ball more than two hundred and fifty yards, which I don't. <laughs> but when I actually play it on the sim and the guy hits it like two seventy, I'm like, oh, this is actually pretty easy. I don't hit the golf ball past my shadow, so I can't relate to that. But I was like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. So, yeah, we've done that. Uh, the first nine, actually, I think I've done the first 10 holes. And then I kind of got sidetracked with the business starting and so on and so forth. So it was going to finish that up. There was a, there was a lot of a lot of chat going on when um, somebody had done Eagle Creek. Uh, yep. And uh, now I played it. it, it it's OK. <laughs> it's it's well, not there's a little there's there, there are some some inaccuracies particularly with number one where they've got the bunker on the right hand side of the fairway not the left um, yeah. off the first tee and there's no creek running down between nine and ten it's i'm not sure what it is and i know i know that with the golf club i know we're getting off off sidetrack here but that's fine that's what this podcast is all about getting sidetracked talking about golf um my uh, youngest son brandon he's uh, he plays that game uh, the the uh, 2k21 yeah yeah uh, and uh he does the course builds he loves doing the course builds but he likes to do his own yeah and he's like the detail that you can put into it as far as the rock walls and the the bridges and stuff like like it's it's very very detailed and i um i so i know i'm, I'm saying i'm hoping that the equinel one that you're doing when it's completed will be extremely detailed and it's, and it's, you know. it's pretty good there's also um stone bridges on there 
but it's called Manatic National. All right, because they probably wouldn't be able to necessarily call it Stonebridge unless uh, they get exactly. permission and from people, Monarch Homes. Yeah, so people come around asking for money. So I think on there, there's about 20 different versions of Augusta as well. Really? Um, it's a good so thing Stonebridge I, is on there because it's not open. So if you want to play Stonebridge. <laughs> so for all the listeners out there and all the viewers on YouTube, if you have 2K21, and maybe if you're lucky enough to have a simulator, if you don't have a simulator, I know somebody who can build you one. But if you want to play Stonebridge, play Monarch National on 2K21, you can get your Stonebridge fix in. Manatic National. Manatic National. Sorry, Manatic National. Manatic National. National. But it, it, it's a very good version. They've made it a little bit longer, obviously, to compete with the guys that are obviously hitting 300 off the tee on the, when they're using controllers. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty good rendition. I'm dead straight. 2K21. I hit the ball so straight, it's insane. And my putting, um, if I could just figure out a way to put one of those those white lines on yeah. the ground when I'm putting in real life, like I, man, PGA Tour, Bryson and, and the boys on the tour would have nothing on me. <laughs> yeah, I played uh, Augusta with Sunday pins, uh, obviously back the, the very longest you could play it. And I hold a bunker shot on 18 to shoot 99. And I didn't think I played particularly badly. So it's, it, it was so long. I felt as if I was having to take the curvature of the air into account when I was hitting shots. It just felt so long. Um, it was pretty tough. But yeah, no, uh, TGC is a, is a nice program. And it's fun creating your own content. Oh, no question. So you built a dozen systems. Uh, you got more on the way. Uh, there's got to be some 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 interesting stories to tell about some of the builds that you've done that you can share with us. Uh, that you know, let's let's be let's be somewhat political, but you know, I want to you know we want to hear some stories. There's got to be some stories. Um, so far, I think the best, I, I, the, the the funniest thing where we kind of my staff and I just looked at each other was like, oh my oh my goodness. So we had a couple up in Quebec, really nice couple, uh, obviously very French, way up in St. Combe, which is right, uh, for me, northern Quebec, up past Tremblant type thing, middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, we get up there and the guy's done a purpose-built garage for his sim to go in. So that's great, you know, he's, and he, he's, he's done so well. He's, he's a real craftsman. So we're doing our thing and we're a couple of there, a um, couple of days, everything's getting finished. Um, I've got the PC they're ready to turn things on, activate the, the license, because they get a, with True Golf, they get a 60 day trial before they go for the, before they have to um, pay for extra courses, if that's what they want to do. Um, so you always wait for the last minute to activate it so they get as much use from it as they can. So I say, okay, um, if you could just give me your Wi Fi key and I can uh, activate your license and get you going. And they're like, uh, we do not have uh, internet. I'm like, what do you mean you don't have internet? we don't have internet it's, it's we're too far we're too remote and uh we refuse to pay the extra it is for the the remote version and i'm like oh so at that point it was seven o'clock at night and we we're like panicking so we had to get back down to the motel with the pc um before curfew check in for an extra night to the motel and then sit with motel wi-fi which you probably know yourself isn't always the best and try and download 96 golf courses on this pc and activate everything to take it back up to them the next morning um yeah it was just like and you know typical northern quebec french you know no internet but the house was full of wine you know it was just uh my first real having only been in canada for three or four years my first real uh, experience of quebec uh so that was a bit different from that perspective um other than that no, nothing too, nothing too uh, hilarious yet. I'm sure we'll have time for it. You know, um, no doubt. Okay. Yeah, I'm a little jealous myself because obviously, as you know, um, somebody on the Flagstick team does have a simulator uh, in their garage, and it's not me, um, yeah. Mister Mister McLeod. <laughs> it's it's very impressive. Very impressive. He, he, we, we put it in, and then the, like three hours later, he had uh, Noah Steele, who you guys all know is a serious, serious golfer, um, putting it through his paces with his crazy club head speed. So it held up well. So I was proud of that. So um, yeah, no, that's good. And I think we've got two more, just from people knowing Scott, we've got two more jobs in Kingston earmarked for the fall. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, th those that know, Scott's a P is a PGA of Canada um, a professional, Ottawa Zone PGA of Canada professional, and he teaches. The primary use for his simulator, he says, is for teaching, um, yeah. which he does a lot of, and uh, as well as all his other duties. Uh, but um, I was talking to him on the phone the other day as I was going to pick my kids up from school, and I kept hearing this loud thud. And I, and I was like, what is that sound? And, I, and it just dawned on me because I, I keep forgetting he has one. I said, are you hitting balls while you're talking to me on the phone? He goes, well, I had to, I had to go out into the garage. And so I just uh, decided to hit a couple of shots. So there you go. You get a simulator, you get to hit balls whenever you want during the day. So I'm, uh, I'm thinking when I'm done talking to you, I'm going to get the uh, iPhone out, do a little text. My wife's upstairs working. Uh, I'm going to do a little text and say, uh, you know, the garage, there's nothing really going on there. And, you know, maybe we could put something in there, but I got a feeling I know what the answer to that question is going to be before I ask it. But it is, it is what it is, sir. You wait till she asks that she wants to spend money on something, and then you say, well, that's great. What do you think about this? You know? <laughs> yeah, that might work. That might work. Well, listen, Andy, um, I am so excited that we had an opportunity to do this. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun chatting with you, just chatting with you in general, but chatting with you about uh, golf simulators. And I, I hope that the conversation has sparked and excited uh, some people into wanting to get them. So before I let you go, let's just tell people how they can find you to talk to you about putting a simulator in their home or their business or whatever. So, um, so the website is www.golfsimgurus.ca. That's a little bit of a work in progress, but there's some images on there and the phone numbers on there. Uh, my cell number is 613-698-0787. And we're also on Twitter, Instagram, and it's at golfsimgurus. Uh, so any of those, you can get a hold of me. Um, yeah, like I say, if it's just questions, if it's something you're thinking of two years down the line or for your next house because you're selling your house right now because the prices are all through the roof and you're thinking about it for your next abode, then give me a shout and just say, what do I need sort of thing? And we can help you as much as we can. That's awesome. Well, thanks again for doing this, bud. Uh, and uh, hopefully, the, hopefully some people want to get some sims. So we'll talk to you very, very soon. Thank you very much. Hey, no worries. Well, that was great. Thank you very much, Andy, for uh, for taking the time to be with us uh, this week. I know, I know, I'd love to have a golf simulator, but uh, I don't think that I can pull that one off. I have a garage. There's no car in the garage. There's lots of space in the garage. Um, you know what? Actually, let's just take a second here. Hang on. My wife's upstairs working in her office, and I'm downstairs in the studio doing this podcast. Well, I'm just going to send a quick text. What do you think? about the idea of using the unused garage to put in a golf simulator slash sports simulator for the kids. It would be a great thing for them to be able to do on snowy, rainy days. Send. All right. I sent it. We'll see if it actually... Uh, gets any traction. I have my doubts. Anyway, continuing a golf ready, getting, uh, getting ready for the golf season. Um, like I said at the beginning there, lots of golf courses are starting to open up. Driving ranges at those golf courses are probably already open. There's tons of standalone driving ranges throughout the entire 613 uh, that are open. Um, and uh, in, uh, in keeping with the getting ready for the golf season theme, we're going to head out to the lesson tee again and talk to our good buddy, Kevin Haim, and he's got our quick tip. All right, golfers, Jake Haim and I here hitting a few shots and trying to help you with your swing. I've been watching Jake hit balls for the last two years, doing that little rehearsal drill every single time he hits it. Jake is trying to get the weight a little bit more into his trailing hip, turn a little deeper into the hip, and he's working on swinging that golf club instead of picking it up. When you practice, you should be doing the same thing. Find something that encourages proper motion and it'll help you be a better golfer. I see way too many people just hitting, good shot, Jake. Thank you. Just hitting golf shots from a static position and trying to hit balls. Work on something, it'll help you play better. Well, that's another awesome quick tip from Kevin Haim. Now we are gonna have uh, some different uh, PGA of Canada golf professionals throughout the Ottawa zone doing tips. Uh, each and every week on this uh, on the 613 Golfer podcast. Um, 
Kevin is, uh, has been gracious enough to, uh, to provide us with a number of tips to kick our season off before everybody gets open. And uh, it's always, always great to get, uh, get tips from Kevin Haim. Now, there are some other things that, uh, that are happening uh, throughout the uh, 613 uh, on the same front as, um, as uh, getting practice facilities open. Now, I've, I've talked about the number of facilities that are open. Um, there's a couple other things. If you visit flagstick.com, you have noticed that there's a, currently a, an article up there called Range Work. And Range Work is, is an article that was written by Scott McLeod and it's sort of an update on, on some things that are going on in the region. One of the things with this podcast that we want to do is keep, keep you up to date. Now, once a month, Scott's going to come on um, and he's going to give us our, his regional golf, his 613 golf or regional golf report. And that's going to be a little bit more in-depth, a little bit more long-winded, uh, encompassing a whole bunch of different things. Every once in a while, there's little tidbits and news that are happening. And two ranges in particular are doing uh, a little bit of work on their driving ranges. Uh, the, Landings, uh, the Landings Golf uh, and uh, Learning Center, uh, Teaching Center down in Kingston, Ontario, uh, is uh, is doing some work on their tea line. They're do, putting in an awful lot of work getting their uh, their tea line open. Did some work in the fall, um, and uh, they're ready to put some turf down. And uh, it's all about improvements. We also have uh, Castle View Golf Course in the in Ottawa's East End in, near Castleman. That's also doing some work on their driving room and improving their tea line, getting down uh, new mats. And this is all in an effort to to provide better practice areas for and bigger practice areas for the golfers that uh, that you know use their facilities on a regular basis and those that want to start using it this is just the way things are now you go to driving ranges in the past and driving ranges might not have enough space some tons of space some not so much so, so they're having to do different things and golf courses are improving their driving ranges to be able to have space for people to hit golf balls unfortunately tee sheets are filling up there's not as much room available on a regular basis for people just to play, but people still want to participate in golf. And this is one of the reasons, this is one of the ways that golf courses can, can expand their facilities because they can't build more holes. Uh, that just wouldn't make any sense, so, but they can make improvements to their driving ranges. I know Rita View Golf Club in, uh, in Manatick is making some massive changes to their practice facility and their driving range. And, and a lot of those changes will be in place late summer, early fall. Um, you know, so it's, it's a bit of a trend that's happening anyways. So that's pretty much all I have to, uh, to talk about for this week, uh, on the 613 golfer podcast. I want to thank everybody for, uh, for tuning in and listening. I want to remind you about the contest, the, uh, favorite hole in the region contest. Make sure you submit those, uh, those, uh, selections to me at jbotter at flagstick.com send a picture if you got them make sure you tell me what the course is and what the hole is if you're not sending a picture and even if you are sending a picture um listen to us on apple uh apple Podcasts and spotify visit flagstick.com you'll be able to see uh downloads for the audio play the audio right there you'll be able to see the youtube link you'll be able to play the youtube uh, video right there uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Please do subscribe to us on YouTube. There's a lot of things that uh, you might not see in the audio podcast that you would see in the YouTube if you watched it, because we do uh, some, some funky things with production and graphics there. So subscribe to us on YouTube. Make sure you click notifications and, and uh, the, little, the little bell. Click notifications. Like us. We like to see. Make sure that you like us. And uh, I want everybody to enjoy the long weekend. Be smart. Play by the rules. Follow the protocols. Thanks very much for tuning in to 613 Golfer Podcast. I'm Jeff Potter. Always remember, go for the stick.